Secure closure of the fascia is crucial to prevent early post-operative complications like surgical site infections, wound dehiscence, as well as late complications like incisional hernias. In this module, I will demonstrate evidence-based techniques for facial closure of the midline laparotomy as recommended by the European Hernia Society. For this demonstration, we will be using a size 0 polydiax non-suture that is coated with triclosan or also known as PDS+. We have the suture on a round body needle for the closure of fascia. With a retractor placed within the wound, it is visible that the skin incision is longer than the subcutaneous incision, which is in turn longer than the facial incision. The corners of the subcutaneous as well as the facial incisions are clearly visible. We begin by creating a self-locking anchoring knot. The first bite is taken on bare fascia about 5 mm beyond the end of the incision. Keep the short end of the suture about 8 to 10 inches long and hold it between the thumb and the ring finger in your left hand. Use your index and middle fingers as shown to further stabilize the suture to help you knot. Introduce the needle driver from underneath these two parts of the thread, point it slightly downwards and rotate the needle driver three times to create three loops. Use the right index finger to bring the three loops together and hold them in place. Take the left hand and feed the short end of the suture to the end of the needle driver and pull it across the three loops. Pull upon the suture to tighten the assembly. This self-locking knot tightens on applying tension to it, losing only about 5-10% to of its tensile strength unlike the classic surgeon's knot which loses about 40%. Cut the short end of the suture at a distance of about 5 mm. A continuous closure is preferred as it reduces the number of knots and consequently the potential points of weakness within the closure. Proceed with the short stitch technique, taking bites that are 5 mm away from the facial incision on both sides. and ensure that each successive pass moves 5 mm along the incision. As per the recent recommendations, there is no requirement to close the peritoneum in a separate layer. When you have finished suturing the length of the incision and you have arrived on intact fascia, we can now complete the closure with the help of an Aberdeen self-locking knot. Pass the long end of the suture through the last loop and tighten the knot by applying traction with the right hand. Utilize the base of this hand to ensure that the knot lies flat on the fascia. It may not be fully snug during the initial pass, so repeat this process at least 4 to 5 times threading the long thread through the loop to form a new loop. With each repetition, apply traction with your ring and little fingers to tighten the knot and ensure that you have a snugly sitting knot. You can use your left hand to further tighten it as necessary. Conclude the Aberdeen knot after four to five passes by passing the entire thread, including the needle, through the loop to lock it. As the Aberdeen knot is bulky, it's preferable to bury it. Pull up on the suture and take a pass extremely close to the knot, emerging obliquely a short distance away. Avoid taking a deep bite to prevent injury to the underlying viscera. When you have pulled the entire thing through, the Aberdeen knot will be buried deep underneath and you can cut the suture flush with the fascia for a neat finish.